Let's discuss mild scoliosis. Mild scoliosis is often a diagnosis that parents get, either from an x-ray report or from the, directly from the orthopedist, the pediatrician, and they're not really sure what it is. So let's discuss what actually is mild scoliosis. Now, when we're looking at the spine from the front, it should be perfectly straight. Mild scoliosis means that there's a side-to-side -side bend to the spine, and typically it's gonna be around 10 to 20 degrees, maybe up to 25 degrees would still be considered mild scoliosis. The important thing about it is that in the medical world, the general principle here is do nothing. That's the treatment, do nothing. It's a crazy thing when you think about it. Like how many conditions would you have that if you had a mild case of it, the recommendation would be, let's wait. But yet that is the typical medical model. And why is that dangerous? Well, because there's a lot of research that's been done on mild scoliosis, and we know that if we have a curve of around 20 degrees in a young child, there's around a 70% chance that that curve is gonna become progressive, even up to the point of surgery. So many parents come to me and they say, I reject the medical model. I don't wanna do that. I wanna take action. And here we're proactive. And when we have a mild case, it's essentially an exercise-based program for the child to do at home. So they come here, they learn the exercises, but 99% of the treatment is done by the child in their own house. Yes, they come back here for checkups. We want to evaluate them. We want to make sure that everything's going according to plan. We want to make sure that the curve is not progressive in spite of a, a program because that can happen in rare cases. So we're very vigilant. However, we don't just sit back and wait and see what's going to happen. We take action. We develop a program for that child and we're able to knock the curve down and stabilize it. Now, if we have a child that can finish their growth with a mild scoliosis, that's fine. We're not expecting to have a straight spine at the end of treatment. What we wanna do is have that child complete their skeletal maturity with a curve that's mild, like say 20 degrees or less, and there's no real issues as the child ages. They're not gonna have progression. They're not gonna have any more back pain than the average adult. And I'm telling you this based on the research. This is not my opinion. I'm telling you this is what science says, that all they need to do is to maintain the stability of their spine, and that can be done with general fitness type exercising. 10 degrees happens to be a somewhat arbitrary definition of mild scoliosis or at the beginning of scoliosis. And when I look back into the history, because I was curious, like why 10, why not eight, why not nine, why not 12? So I looked back into the literature and what I found was really surprising. I found an article from the New England Journal of Medicine. Actually, let me rephrase that. It wasn't an article. It was a letter to the editor by an orthopedic surgeon who suggested that 10 degrees might be an appropriate level to diagnose scoliosis at. And yet, for whatever reason, that cut. And now everybody holds 10 degrees, but that's where it comes from. It's just something of an arbitrary uh, comment, a letter to the editor, New England Journal of Medicine. Now let's talk about mild scoliosis in the adult. Because mild scoliosis in the adult is really a different kettle of fish. When we see the adult population approximately 60% of people over the age of 70 are gonna have scoliosis, a diagnosable case of scoliosis. So in other words, 10 degrees or more based upon that standard of the letter to the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine. But what's happening there in the adult is when scoliosis starts, and typically it's gonna be around 50 years old or so, it's due to degeneration in the spine. As the degeneration progresses, the person collapses into the curve and the curve is progressive as an adult, and the curve is progressive at a rate of around two to four degrees a year. So it's very important, even for the adult who has mild scoliosis, to be treated for it so that it doesn't continue to be progressive. I can tell you that the children with mild scoliosis, over 95% of them come in here with zero pain. But with the adults that come in here, almost all of them are coming in here with pain. Mild scoliosis, large scoliosis, they all come in here with pain because in the adult, mild scoliosis can be a painful condition. Mild scoliosis can be treated by exercises. Now, obviously, my first priority is to get the person out of pain. That's always my first priority, especially in a person with mild scoliosis, because why? The scoliosis is a little bit theoretical to them. They're not so worried about the scoliosis, they're worried about the impact that it's having on their quality of life. So with an adult, number one priority is to get them out of pain. With a child, number one priority is to stop the progression of the curve. And we're able to do this effectively with a scoliosis-specific exercise program. And I'm gonna go into a lot of detail about these different types of exercises as we're going through these 
uh, YouTube videos. But right now, I just want to explain to you, mild scoliosis does not require bracing. It really requires only a home-based exercise program. And sometimes we also want to do therapy here in the office. Thanks for watching. I hope you found all this information helpful. Please subscribe if you'd like to have more information about scoliosis. And don't forget to hit the bell. That'll alert you whenever we publish new information. And if you've got any questions, write them in the comments field, and I'm gonna make sure to address them in a future video. Thanks for watching.